l-Ewlenija tiegħi Mark Avellino fit-taqsim għal imess ser laqana ma' Mark Aġus, manager tal-arti kulinarja fl-Istitut William Angles fil-Belt ta' Melbourne. Whenever I think about Esther, the one thing I really enjoy are hot cross buns. So we've taken this opportunity to spend a bit of time at the William Angles Institute in the city to um, see what they do for their hot cross bun day, where they bring together their history and baking students uh, from all over Melbourne to work together to create hot cross buns for charity and for orders. With us today we've got Mark Agis, the um, manager of the Centre for Food, Trades and Culinary Arts at William Angles. Welcome Mark. Cheers, thanks. Um, nice to be here Mark. <laughs> um, how, how did this event come about? Look, it came about well, maybe probably 20 to 30 years ago. Uh, look, it's been uh, instilled in our programs for a long time where we get a lot of our bakers involved. And look, it, it goes back to the fact that we were donating a lot of our hot response to numerous charity events like the Royal Children's Hospital and other various uh, industry partners here within the, uh, in, in the city. More importantly too, we make hot cross buns for people, for the public, to come and buy our hot cross buns here from our bake shop. So it's been going on for 20, 30 years and it's, it's a great project that we've had and, and gets students involved as well too. So um, when, when um, you've, the idea first came about to do this, was there any talk about the recipe and, and uh, what recipe to use? Yeah, look, uh, the recipe that we have, it's, uh, it's one of our baker's recipe and it's been handed down by a, a, a few of the bakers down, down the track and it's, it, we've had the same recipe for many years. We haven't we haven't changed it in, in, in any way. The students behind us here are yep. at different stages of, of making. So um, what level of, um, of their course are they to be yep. in? So the students that we see in the classroom today, they're all basically just started their course. So they're participating in what we call a Cert 3 retail baking, uh, which takes 12 months as a full-time course. So these students have only been, only been here for the last four or five weeks. So they're quite new to the program. And the unit that they're actually studying to participate in making the hot cross buns is called the Yeast Goods Unit as well too. So they're good, they're, good, they're enjoying it hands on, which is a benefit to them as well too. Do they all get a chance to work on a different part of the baking process or are they on one line for the whole day? Yeah, I think it's important that we change them around. So someone will probably help in making Sean, one of our master bakers here. Um, to weigh the ingredients, then they'll probably go into another process where they'll be rolling the dough, you know, then they're probably making the crosses as well too, piping the cross on top and watching the whole process of proving and baking and then finally when they come out of the oven, giving them that nice sugar coat gloss as well on too. So we try to make sure that everyone gets a good rotation and a good skill on every process as well too. So with this event, is it held at the same time every year? Yeah, look, it's always held, you know, just uh, one or two days prior to Good Friday. Um, so this afternoon, a lot of our people that have ordered hot cross buns will come in and, and pick them up as well too, but it's always traditionally done uh, in this time of the year with our patisserie and bakery programs. Tell us a little bit about William Anglis and what it's all about. Yeah, look, William Anglis, we celebrated our 70th birthday last year, so it's a, it's a school that specialises in hospitality, tourism and culinary arts. So Sir William Manglis started this school now 75 years ago as a butchery school. Uh, it's come a long way since then. So if you want to study hospitality or events or do tourism or go into a Bachelor of Culinary Arts, study patisserie. So basically anything with foods, uh, we do here, food science, technology as well too. So um, this is I suppose special, specialist. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, I suppose one of our benefits is that we have great such a cohort of strong people with a great knowledge of food as well too. We get our, our bakers to work with our cooks, our patissiers to work with our cooks, or our cooks to work with our butchers. So there's a lot of that cross training within our programs as well too, to make sure that our students get the, the real firm knowledge to get the industry ready as well too. From the courses available here, what would be the, probably the top three courses that you would be known for? Yeah, probably it's the top courses, I suppose, with patisserie and commercial cookery. I mean, everyone, when they think about William Angus, they think about foods. Mm. So patisserie and cookery, uh, I suppose, two of our core programs are very strong. You've also got about events programs, events and, and tourism. They're quite strong programs as well, too. You know, think about our hospitality. So if you're thinking about becoming a waiter, you know, I suppose this is one of our strengths here as well, too. But we are moving now into our, our degree programs, and they're, they're becoming a lot stronger as well, too, from a pathway point of view as well. Um, just a little bit about yourself. How did you, with a surname like Aegis, yep. obviously you've got a Maltese background. Yep. Um, how did you get involved in food? Look, I got involved in food. It's, it's interesting. Um, both of my sisters are chefs. 
and my parents are not chefs, but uh, I suppose we started 25 years ago working in the industry. Uh, I just saw that the industry, there's so much to offer from a perspective from travel and food and working with people. And look, if you're going to be working in a field, you know, it's such a diverse industry. Uh, I really love working with with people, I think it's really important. Nothing can see more enjoyment with customers enjoying their food. I think it's one of the, the best satisfaction, whether you're a baker, a patissier, or a cook, because I'm, I'm a chef by trade. Um, but there's, there's great satisfaction and enjoyment in, in giving, a, a, I suppose, a guest the food, they're enjoying it, and you know, it's, it's quite complimentary in that as well, too. It's good that people like Anton Kimaluri, um, who's got his own restaurant, from my understanding, yeah. Squeeze It All. Um, but I think it's really a, I think it's a trade that, from a dish point of view, which I know we've got the Maltese Ninja competition that occurs, and it's great to see that we can pass down recipes. And I think it's really important that the older generation provide us with those those old style recipes as well, too, because it'll get lost. No, absolutely. And we really need to keep that momentum going as well, too. Um, if you had to think about um, the ingredients of Malta, if you were to cook a dish in Malta and then transpose it here, um, do you think that the ingredients can influence the, the taste on a traditional dish or is it that special something that mum throws in that they don't tell you? <laughs> yeah, look, sometimes it could be that, that, that the ingredient that mum may not put in as well too, but, but being overseas, experiencing the, um, the tomatoes, the capers, oh, it's, it's, it's different overseas. You, yeah. You know, the fish, yeah, okay, it's very similar to what we've got here as well too, but I think it comes down to more importantly your training. And I think one of the most important things with a chef or a baker, patissier, is being able to produce a dish consistently. But there should be no reason why we can't produce the same food here in Melbourne like they produce in all time. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for your time. It's been a great pleasure to sort of see everything that's going on here and to talk a little bit about um, yourself and your journey in, in food. And um, yeah, enjoy enjoy Easter. Pleasure, and uh, to everyone out there, later to tell you. Great thing about being here is we're getting to meet the students, and one of the students that we're, we're meeting today is Kelly Gatt. So for a name like Gatt, we've got a Maltese uh, origin student here. Uh, welcome to Maltese Down Under. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly, uh, can you tell me um, what course you're studying here? Um, so I'm currently studying a dual qualification. Um, so it's my Cert 3 in Commercial Cookery, and my Cert 4 in um, Patisserie. What does that sort of give you when you sort of finish the course? Um, um, so it gives me the qualification of um, obviously having the cooking experience in doing uh, restaurant classes and also giving me the pastry side of things where I'm able to look at um, a little bit of baking, like making the hot cross buns and uh, more technical desserts and cakes and things like that. Yeah. So have you had an opportunity yet to work in industry? Uh, um, I have. I've recently uh, found a job in a restaurant down in uh, the end of the city, um, which just gives me a good range of skills that I can use in the pastry and the cookery side of things. What brought you to food? What was the reason you went there? Um, well, I have a very, very large family being Maltese um, and we've always been based around, you know, food and um, how, you know, when you come together, what you celebrate and what it's all about. So, yeah, food's been a very big part um, of my history and growing up. Um, I do have a line of chefs and pastry chefs in my family as well, being my uh, great uncles and my uh, aunties and stuff like that, so it's yeah. been a big influence. So is that both in Malta and, and over here? Uh, yeah. 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 Have you been to Malta? Um, um, I personally haven't. Yeah. Uh, my parents have. Uh, I do plan to travel hopefully next year over yeah. there to spend a bit of time. When you graduate and when you're sort of deciding, okay, I want to be this type of chef, yeah. Um, what is one of the Maltese dishes you may like to try? Um, I'd really like to try stool fart and get it um, down pat because I know it's something that's a very big thing in my family. Yep. Um, also the Maltese for goalie. Were you in one of those situations where you're always helping your, your parents with, with cooking? Um, yeah, so I spend a lot of time with my grandparents um, like on weekends and things like that. So. Um, I'd always, you know, get my hands in there and help my grandma some chop some things up. Um, and I sort of brought that home too and it was good because not many people in my family were into that sort of thing. So it gave me that experience to sort of um, get my skills working at home and slowly build them up. Yeah. Um, so you've got the two savoury sweets. Yep. Fagoli, <laughs> Stafat. 
um, if you were to choose? Um, if I were to choose, I'd probably have to go for Goldie. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I'm a bit of a sweet tooth. So, um, good luck with trying to sort of Thanks. get your own unique take on it and to p perfect that kind thank of recipe. You. And all the best for the future. Thank you for joining thank us here. Thanks for having me.